So I have something interesting, I think, that I'm going to talk about. Bernie Sanders being in front of the runner. At this point in time, I thought I'd point out something that I find hilarious that people are advocating for. So we often see certain side of the parties calling on tech censorship, meaning they can't go and censor us because the, the First Amendment binds their hands. But if that First Amendment was gone, they certainly would act upon their wishes. And how do we know this? Because they frequently call on the powers that can act on their wishes to do so. And often they have fallen to political pressure. Take YouTube, for example. This so-called fake news that Hillary propped up, Trump created, and um, basically bullied and belittled the uh, mainstream media, Fox, CNN, so on and so forth. They have now taken over the political landscape of YouTube. Uh, anytime you watch any of the videos from anyone else that does political commentary, uh, I don't know about myself, actually, because I've not done any inc incognito mode, but I imagine it would be the same in my situation uh, because I put some of my videos in the politics and news section that they would indeed just force you right over to Fox, probably, or CNN, or somebody of that nature. And why not? They're authoritative, so they're claimed to be, even though they get shit wrong all the time, lie straight to your face, and then try to tell you otherwise. It's, it's really kind of disturbing. Well, the newspapers are no different than everything else. And we have the front runner, who is a socialist and praises communists and has convinced a large portion of this country that that's a good way to go. Well, there's a book you need to read. Actually, it's a series of books. It's not just one. It's called The Gulag Archipelago. And in fact, you can see the Gulag Archipelago in real time today around a disaster. Now, everybody knows about the coronavirus. I haven't spoken much about it because I'm not a biologist. I understand that what it is is, a, I guess, an off strain of the flu, and it's highly infective and much more lethal than your average flu because it can kill you quicker um, with complications and whatnot. You get sick and die off of this stuff, right? It's no, it's no joke. Just like any other major new strain of viruses, they're kind of concerned on the human body being able to build an immunity. I actually saw a meme out there. It was really good. Um, this is a good opportunity for anti-vaxxers to go test their theory to see if vaccines work or not. Uh, once a coronavirus is um, made into a vaccine, uh, if it needs a vaccine, mind you, I think they should go see if vaccines don't work. And don't endanger their kids, by the way. No, 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 no. You go yourself. I, I, you haven't been vaccinated, right? You're in your 20s and 30s. This whole movement started a while ago. So why don't you go over and expose yourself to the coronavirus and see if you survive? I think it's a great idea. Um, no, I'm not advocating for these people's deaths. I'm calling their bluff. They won't do it. Um, which is... Well, you know what? Maybe they would. So yeah, uh, anti-vaxxers, you're stupid. Don't, don't do stupid things. I, I take it back. Anyways, I thought I'd outline something for you. And that is to demonstrate exactly what would happen if the government controlled the media. BBC, for example, is controlled by the government. You have to pay a, well, it's quasi controlled by the government. You have to pay a license fee through the government, basically a tax to uh, a license, I guess. And you're criminally charged if you do not pay this, meaning they have a permanent income based, based on basically the government holding a gun to your head. Pay your licensing fee for TV or go to jail because we offer this free service. Um, they should do like public broadcasting did 
or still does around here, and do begathons every quarter uh, to have people pay for their, excuse me, pay for the people in programming. Well, anyways, I digress. Um, that First Amendment protects us in many ways you don't even realize. So what happens when the government, which would happen under Bernie Sanders, is completely controlled, uh, has complete control over the use of force. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's a fan of Antifa, so they get to run around and do whatever else they want. But then he gets control of media and the narrative. I want to demonstrate something to you. Here's a New York Times article. Two video bloggers, pretty brave because they're in China and China doesn't permit this shit, went streaming of an unfiltered videos of lines to get into hospitals because it's socialized medicine, uh, feeble patients, and people dead. They've now gone silent. According to this report, uh, they, they vanished. The people... The People's Republic of China, the people have decided these people are um, working against the people. That's how it works in communism. They weren't doing journalism. No, no, no. This, this would be perfectly acceptable in the United States. Although YouTube would bury their ass under 15 layers of Fox, CNN, and whatever coverage because it's a hot ticket item. These people would be buried. You wouldn't find the live footage because YouTube buries it. So we have soft communism thanks to YouTube and Susan Wojcicki and Twitter and all those others. They bury this kind of shit too. But these two video bloggers are now gone. They're either in the gulag for if, if they call if he copied Stalin's approach, they now have 10 year prison sentences for illegal distribution of video, illegal distribution of sensitive information, um, compromise the people's trust, and any other charge they wanted to put on there that might be illegal in China in 10 years. Uh, that is, they're going to torture you until you confess to your crimes because you can't just go through a trial for something like this. No, they throw your ass in a prison and torture you until you confess to the crimes against the people. And then you go to prison to carry out your sentence. Assuming they don't just kill you outright, which also does happen. Or you die of the torture, which also did happen. Um, working against the people is not something you should do in a communist society. So what do you think would happen... If somebody just went disappeared that was a video streamer recording people well antifa seems to get a lot of uh, get away with a lot of shit they just beat your ass um but the the law the state doesn't take you haul you off torture you and throw you into a prison to which you'll never be found again but now i want to demonstrate something that's equally disturbing while we don't have that here right? We don't have that issue in the United States. We do have something else. We have the delete button. Instead of covering this, China has probably talked to the New York Times and said, how dare you cover this in our country? Get rid of that shit right now. And poof, the tweet no longer exists. So when they say a foreign government, foreign entity has meddled in our elections, it's because we have a globally uh, distributed network of information. Some countries don't like that. Guess which ones they are? Authoritarian, communist, socialist. One of those com three or a combination thereof. So while we in the America are protected by the First Amendment and can say literally whatever the hell we want, there are consequences to our speech, of course. You, you can't go in a crowded building and you're fire. Um, you can't threaten people with uh, acts of violence. Maxine Waters, we're speaking to you. You 
suggested an entire group of people go and harass people that was criminal. You should be charged with uh, criminal mischief, in my opinion. And it's not the first time. But anyways, think about this. We have a different form now. And that format capitulates to stakeholders. If their stakeholder happens to be another government, this is what happens. All I did was click on the link for that tweet so I could read and see what else other people are commenting and so on and so forth. Poof. That tweet does not exist. Down the ether hole. I, I'm not going to click on the article, to be honest. The article might still exist. That's certainly possible. And maybe they just deleted it and rephrased their little comments. That's also possible. But they were accurate the first time. So why did it disappear? That's the world Bernie wants to bring. He doesn't have to make policy to uh, destroy our First Amendment. He doesn't need a two-thirds state majority to vote an amendment to repeal the first or the second. He can influence by force. He can influence by subversion. So when Pelosi and friends and the rest of the Democrats lean on tech companies to fight fake news, to stop the spread of disinformation, to delete a meme of her shredding the Constitution, uh, delete a video of her shredding, not the Constitution, but the actual document that she did shred, which was the State of the Union address speech. She shredded that. And it went over all the times that he was calling out families and the, the good things that happened and then the nitpicking articles also came after that. But, you know, he, all he did was inflate the numbers a little bit. He, he rounded up. What do fucking do? But they don't need to create or nullify the first. They just have to make life hard for those particular companies that are stationed in the United States. The one place where we have the freedoms for them to do whatever they want and allow people to say whatever they want to say. And then they capitulate to the pressures of the government, not realizing they are also too spreading communism. Anyways, I thought this was an interesting little thing to demonstrate how this micro setting has occurred. And perhaps the tech companies should realize they're going down the wrong way. And history will not be forgiving. I understand that they're, I mean, MySpace and a couple others were before them. And they were kind of crap platforms. But they got a pretty solid platform with a wide reach to allow people to speak. And then you shut people up you don't like. That's the first step down the wrong way. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. Hey, hey.